What did the Magi do when they found him? Matthew chapter 2 tells us. It says that they bowed down and worshipped him. It says that they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. Just like the Magi who first had to find Jesus in order to worship him. As Native and First Nations people, we have the opportunity and privilege of finding Jesus as well so that we can worship him. Stay good day. Welcome, my friends, to The Storyteller, where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. Over 2,000 years ago, God did something so amazing that we continue to remember and celebrate it even today. He gave a gift for all people, including the First Nations of this land. Do you know the story and its significance? Join us for this special Christmas edition of The Storyteller. Uh, hello, my name is Ryan O'Leary, and I'm an Ojibwe from northern Minnesota. I'm enrolled in the Boys Fort Band. I want to start by just sharing about when I was a kid. Christmas to me was, was mostly about the gifts I received and the food I ate. I can still remember getting my toy rocking horse when I was about four or five. I remember sitting on that rocking horse and rocking back and forth for a long time and, and having a blast on it. I remember getting my electronic racetrack when I was about eight. It had glow-in-the-dark side rails on it. I loved sitting in the dark and using the remote control to send my car around the glow-in-the-dark track. I also remember the food I ate. Mostly, I remember two things, chocolate and candy canes. Every Christmas, it seemed like my parents got me a candy cane that must have weighed between one to two pounds. It was gigantic. I think I ate most of it in about two days, and I always had a big stomach ache because I ate way too much sugar too quickly. Every Christmas, I loved getting a chocolate Santa Claus as well. I especially liked it when it was solid chocolate. Thankfully, I grew up and matured and started eating healthier, and more importantly, started living in a right relationship with our Creator. God got a hold of my heart and life and changed me. He helped me to realize that Christmas is about something much more than the material gifts we receive or the food that we eat, including chocolate. I want to ask you something. Why do you celebrate Christmas? Is it because it's something you've just always done? Is it just to have a good time or spend time with family alone or to get gifts and enjoy the food? Why do you really celebrate Christmas? The Christmas story in God's Word tells us the real reason for celebrating it. I'm going to read to you the story from the New International Version. What happens in it is still happening today in some ways. In fact, it can happen in your own life. Please listen to what part of the Christmas story says. It's about people who are called the Magi. You're going to hear about an evil king, that being Herod, calling the Magi to go and search for the baby Jesus so that they could find him eventually. Here's what the story says in Matthew chapter 2, 7 through 12. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child was with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. King Herod didn't have good intentions when he told the Magi to go and search for Jesus. Herod didn't really want to worship Jesus. He wanted to find Jesus so that he could have him killed. He knew Jesus was a king and he felt threatened by it. But Herod's words still speak to us right now about our Creator's will for each one of us. It can happen today no matter where we live and what tribe we're from. 
It starts by making a careful search for Jesus. He himself was dark-skinned and from a tribe, the tribe of Judah. When someone hears talk about searching for him, it might raise some questions like, how do I do that right now? The Christmas story in Matthew 2 is about the Magi going to look for a physical Jesus who was born and laid in a manger. We can't do that. How can we search for Jesus right now? During this Christmas season, you can go to a church nearby and be a part of it. There are some very good people in them that share God's word and the importance of having a relationship with Jesus. I believe that going to a church that shares God's word and stresses having a relationship with Christ will help you in your spiritual journey. You can also find a Bible, pick it up, and begin reading it. As you're reading it, you're not just reading any normal book. You're reading a book that is inspired and comes from our Creator God Himself. As you read the Bible, particularly the Gospels, you're going to see what Jesus is like. You're going to see how he preached and taught. He was the most loving and caring person people ever knew and will know. You're going to see how he went to the cross, suffered, and died on it for you. That's how much he loves you. You can even pray and talk to God right where you're at. It's a part of searching for Jesus. You're listening to this radio program maybe because you're searching for him or some kind of life purpose and meaning. The promise that the Magi had and that we have today is that when we search for Jesus, we can find him. That's what Herod told the Magi. He said, go and make a careful search for Jesus, and as soon as you find him. Jesus was a real baby. He was born of a virgin and was literally laid in a manger in what many believe was an animal trough. People think, Jesus isn't for me. He can't really associate with me. I'm not wealthy and not someone special. I say, Jesus can associate with you. He wasn't born in some fancy hospital. He was born in very humble circumstances and was even laid where animals ate. You're special to him because you're made in his image. I love what Acts chapter 17 says about being able to find God. It says in verses 26 and 27, from one man he made every nation of men. What it is saying is that God made Adam first and from him came every other nation. That includes every tribal nation. It continues saying that they should inhabit the whole earth and he or God determined the time set for them in the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men and women for that matter would seek him and perhaps reach out for and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Maybe this Christmas you're thinking, is there really a God? And is he really close to me? Or is he just distant from me? The truth is that God is very, very close to you, whether you believe it or not. You can find him and begin living a new life that has things like faith, hope, and love. The problem today is that too many people stop at only hearing the message. They don't respond to it. They don't believe it. They don't trust in it. That's not what the Magi did in the Christmas story. They believed and they responded to the message. The Magi didn't have the New Testament to guide them and to speak to them. God has given us the New Testament to help us and guide us to Jesus. You're being led to him. Just like the star led the Magi to Jesus thousands of years ago. The question is, what will you do with it? Will you follow the guidance and receive not just any Christmas gift, but the greatest and most important gift? It's a gift of God's Son. And by believing in Him and His sacrificial death on the cross, you can have everlasting or eternal life with God in heaven. Life here on earth is is so, so tough. There is mourning, crying, pain, and death. Maybe this Christmas is a very difficult time for you because you've lost someone very close to you and you're lonely for that person. Maybe this Christmas season is difficult for you for some other reason. Maybe you're struggling in some relationship or relationships. Maybe you're down, discouraged, or even depressed. 
Maybe you're in pain and grieving over something that I haven't mentioned. I want to tell you something. Heaven is a place where there will be no more mourning, crying, pain, or death. It will all be gone. I encourage you to put your trust and faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross so that you will be in heaven forever. The book of John talks about to those who received him or received Jesus. He gave the right to become children of God. You see, not everyone is a child of God, only those who receive and trust in Jesus and believe in his name. The Magi began searching for Jesus as they let the star guide them. That star led them to where Jesus was. They found him physically just like people can find him today spiritually and begin a relationship with him. God's word says in the book of Philippians chapter 3 that we can know Jesus personally. It even speaks about the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ. What did the Magi do when they found him? Matthew chapter 2 tells us. It says that they bowed down and worshipped him. It says that they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. Just like the Magi who first had to find Jesus in order to worship him. As Native and First Nations people, we have the opportunity and privilege of finding Jesus as well so that we can worship him. People want to know, what does it really look like to worship God? I believe it involves giving him things of value. Romans chapter 12 tells us that includes our entire existence. It says that we are to present our bodies as living sacrifices to God, and this is our reasonable act of worship. What a life-changing experience the Magi got to be a part of. Each and every one of us can have that same life-changing experience and have a relationship with Christ. Would you like to begin this relationship this Christmas? My friend, there's no better time than now. God wants to be in relationship with you. Consider for a moment what He's done to make that possible. Jesus paid for your wrongdoing with His blood. That's what it took to satisfy justice on our behalf, His life for ours. And then, in an act of supreme power and authority, God raised him from the dead and so declared that sin's debt had been paid in full. Why did he do all this? Listen to Jesus' words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus Christ is the greatest gift ever given, and he was given so that we could be with God forever. Want to know more? Visit our website withoutreservation.com and click on the tab New Life. You can also write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. We're also on Facebook at Without Reservation. Missed a program or want to listen again? You can download our app and take The Storyteller with you. Have a blessed Christmas season, my friends. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There are more amazing stories to tell, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.